welcome. Thank you so much for joining me, keeping me company while I do a comprehensive root bulb cleanup of my Cattleya Lodigesii crossed with Skinnery. I got this orchid in July of 2020 from the orchid room back in the day when Brexit had a transition phase and we quickly, quickly exchanged orchids and it was wonderful to have these in my collection. Oh boy. <laughs> yeah. All right. We are, we have work to do. Look at this. Oh, this is fantastic, but it's not just that. The pot is rock hard. I have my hammer for that eventuality. But this is what I'm looking at. The new root growth. This orchid desperately needs a cleanup, even though she still has room in the pot for another year. And all the bubbles, oxygen exchanged, everything like that. There's still space for another root system, but maybe for two? Huh. Doubtful. Besides, she has been in this pot for two years. That is why I'm going in and cleaning up because I want this orchid then to be left in peace so that she can bloom without me interfering next year, which would have to be the case either way, even if she starts blooming and I could jeopardize that part of her maturity, seeing as she has not bloomed for me yet. We've just been growing this orchid on. I don't want to jeopardize that at all. What I want to do is clean her up now and then leave her be so that she can bloom whenever she's ready. But first of all, we need to address <laughs> the microfiber down here. Oh, what a shame. There's going to be damage, but uh, needs must and we have backup coming. Okay. Wow. I have actually had plans for this video to do two repots in one, but I think I'm going to be biting off too much that I can chew. So I'm going to repot the other bifoliate in a separate video altogether because this is going to take much more time than I would have preferred for one video. That is, of course, assuming that you like to sit through fiddle videos. And unfortunately, Due to the circumstance of these roots being where they are, unless I had a body cam that I could wear across my chest, I can't put in two cameras in this instance. So I hope that you can see what I'm doing. I am not going to go the radical route just yet. I'm going to be protecting every single root that I can and try to cut the microfiber away from the velamen where it is possible and see if we can't salvage some roots to the best of our ability. Now, when you see something like this, of course, it's very, very like, oh no, and you know, your heart sinks and we wanna save roots. On the other hand, we will not be saving any roots in the coming years if we don't do this. The whole pot climate will change, collapse. There will be no more fresh oxygen exchange the roots themselves will suffocate each other out just because of their vigor. So we don't want that either. It's like, you know, being the tough gardener, so to speak. We have to do a radical prune in order to ensure the long-term health of the orchid. If I can, I will forfeit the microfiber once I at least work my way down the roots because, you know, I can replace that easily. If I can save roots, then they have priority above the microfiber. So this orchid, I'm anticipating to get her to bloom. Maybe her coming two growths will bloom this year for us for the first time, but it could be that it'll be next year. So we've dislodged these right here. There's still a little bit attached over here. There we go. There'll be a lot of, there we go. <laughs> this one is through and through, I can just cut the microfiber and remove that and then see where it's, it's a branch. So that can go, even though it was a good one. So we have one attached to the microfiber right down here. We'll try and salvage that. It's even trying to branch, which is nice. 
So the vigor of the root system is giving me peace of mind, even though damage is imminent, but it's giving me peace of mind because the characteristic says with the new root system that is also growing, the old root system that is there will branch. And for a bifoliate, that is all wonderful news because they have a notoriety that precedes them for being avid root dumpers and protest against any form of repot. Bearing in mind, this is my first time repotting this orchid because when she arrived in my collection, of course, all I did was clean her up and put her into my setup of Lekka and self-watering. So I will also learn a little bit of something something when it comes to seeing how she reacts to and responds to this repot. Now this root has already been kinked, so I'm gonna take it off behind the kink. Let's see what we've got going underneath here. From what I can see here, the microfiber is loose, not attached. Let me just reassure myself that I've got everything detached up here. And some tea with lemon. Cheers. <laughs> Always a good thing. Late afternoon tea during an orchid repot? Why on earth not? And should that go cold, <laughs> because I might forget that it's there while I'm doing this, I'll put some ice cubes in it, then it'll be iced tea. <laughs> Beautiful root tip here. Ah, it's gonna go. I have a feeling that's not gonna make it, but let's try. There we go. It's a bit more off there. This root tip is still attached. It's actually grown through, so we'll need to remove another little piece. But I can't see where it's grown through. So let me just assess the situation here. I don't think this root here is gonna stay with us for that much longer. Okay, let's make that little sacrifice. It was a branch from a main root. That's good. Turn her around and have a look, see what's going on on the other side. Okay, so we've got in and out growing roots as well. Wow. So we can take the microfiber back to here. and see what's going on up here. Yeah, can't be helped, can't be helped. So if the coming days aren't as windy as the past days have been, there will be quite a bit of repetition in my content, but it is what the season brings and repotting, cleaning up root balls, all of that is a big necessity for my setup, for any setup for that matter. But still, as the orchids are now a little bit behind schedule because of the drastic spring that we have had, I have to get into them very, very quickly if for the next two months they can recover and get some strength in for the coming winter. So let's get the hammer onto this pot. Usually I like to bash the hammer at the bottom. Now I've got roots at the bottom that I'm trying to hopefully protect. I'm gonna keep away from the root tips. Anything that can cause abrasions there has to come off prematurely so that I can avoid any kind of damage just because we're gonna get radical now. So let's see what we can remove that won't bash that root tip. Now, I'm being super careful at this point in time and afterwards when you see what I do cleaning up, if I go in that direction and not just up pot, then you're gonna wonder why all the fuss in the beginning. Well, in my head, I'm always going by, I don't know what's in the pot, every root is precious. Once I get the orchid out of the pot, then I can decide what am I going to do with what I have available and what is about to come, as in new root growth? And from that moment on, I can be a little bit more radical or just up pot. It leaves me options. Very gentle taps. 
Like working on a coconut. <laughs> Except a coconut would have cracked open by now. All right. We still have roots stuck to the side, even after an hour's soak. Tough roots. Again, that gives me hope. I'm going to put the, whoa, I'm going to put the pot into the mask. It gives me a better angle as well. I'm going to need two hands. Isn't that amazing? Isn't that amazing? What a beautiful root system. See all those little branches coming out here? It's going to be okay. No matter what damage I do, this is going to be okay. The root system has a fantastic vigorous growth characteristic and I love her for it. Many reasons for loving this orchid, even though she's never bloomed. See if that did anything at all. If not, I will get even more radical. Nope. But there's a bit more give in the pot now. That's a good thing as well. Before it was rock hard, now I have a little bit of give. You see what's going on in the pot, even though we are trying to be as careful as possible. The hard lecker bashing up against the velamen of healthy roots in the pot is going to cause its own kind of damage. Something we may not be able to assess with the naked eye, but it makes a lot of sense that if you've got rock against rock bashing up against something soft like an orchid root, then there is damage. So we can be as gentle as we want to and have to be and should be. Damage is inevitable. The thing is, if we don't do this, then it's going to be worse in a couple of years' time. And I don't want that. Will my tag come out now? Yes, it is. <laughs> that wasn't budging when I started this whole thing. But the orchid is budging. Now I have to be very careful. Of course, I'm pulling on growth. They are somewhat older growths. But still, I don't want anything to pop off, obviously. Cut away the pot, you say? Cut away the pot. I can't get these 15 centimeter size pots for the masks anymore. I need to try and save this pot. Otherwise, that would be another option. Come on, you know you want to. I want to really make sure I don't get an orchid flying out of the pot and equipment is going everywhere. I've got more give in the pot now, bit by bit. But no lekkas flying out anymore. <laughs> oh gosh. Gotta get some lekka out. It's now the microfiber holding the orchid back. Let's get the power stance going. The orchid room, if you ever see this video, please don't cringe. You know I mean well. And by the way, I hope you are doing well if you ever see this video. Miss you loads, girl. Miss you loads. You'll always be the Ariel for me. Whoa, here she comes. Let's see what we've got. Oh, do we have to talk about this? <laughs> oh, girl. Look at you, purdy, purdy, purdy. Look at you, purdy, purdy, purdy. I just dropped a lecker bead. I have to pick it up before somebody else with four little legs and fur goes and gets it first. Do we have to talk about this? Flushing, flushing, lots and lots of flushing. And a vigorous orchid. And you know, it is a combination, a recipe that just makes my heart sing. This is an up pot. There is no cleanup necessary here, but I don't think I'm going to get into the cattleya that I still have pending to do that I thought I was going to attack today. Look at this. Oh, I can't stop with the gushing. Huh. Oh boy. <laughs> this is something sweet dreams are made of. 
All right, we've got lots of kinks down here. So the question is, yeah, we're gonna cut them off. And the question is, are we gonna get the microfiber off? We're gonna have to go back down and have a look. Have a closer look, see. Let's check out this microfiber here. Huh. Right. <laughs> okay, so thoughts here. I could do what I normally can do is take off a third down here from the base, remove the microfibers and be done with it. But this is going to be a simple up pot. And the reason I'm going to make this decision is because I want this orchid to be stable, happy in a bigger pot and grow to blooming size. Once we've achieved blooming size, then in two or three years, we can go in and be radical the way I would normally do. This is not that time. I do not want this orchid in any way to feel like she can only bloom in, let's say, two or three years. No way. If I were to do a radical intervention into this root ball, I may risk that. And I say I may because it's the first time that, of course, as I mentioned, I've gotten into this pot, I've seen the root system, and I don't know how she will now react to the repot until in two or three years time, I check her again and see if any of this has failed. And I can determine if it's failed straight after our intervention today, as opposed to a little bit further down the line based on the state of the roots. I hope all that makes sense. Because if she dumps these roots after this intervention being a bifoliate, when I then go in in two or three years time, the outer new roots that are growing now and during that time frame will have covered this layer and then we can see if you're still here with me <laughs> but then we can see how the inside root ball which is this layer responded to the repot of today so there's that i hope all that made sense there is a way to understand the development and progress of a root ball even after such a long time we still have our little root tip here and because we've tried so hard to save it, we're gonna leave it. We can't leave it because this is kinked. Okay, right, we did our best. Thank you for your service, Roots. Appreciate it, but you've got competition now. We need space in that pot. Boy, am I glad I didn't put a support in this pot back in 2020, because <laughs> that would bug me now if I had a support this orchid doesn't need it and then I would be thinking I want that support out of there so nope that's it now the pot I chose was one size up going from 15 centimeters to 18 centimeters let's check and see if that is even worth an up pot if we have enough for two years can you see that let me get you up so this would be the next size up and it looks pretty good but I've got two directions of growth and forgive the puppy in the background chasing a fly. Oh my goodness. <laughs> okay, normal service resumes. But I've got two directions of growth. That means double the root growth coming in to fill that space, which is not going to have much space in the middle of the existing root bulb, but is going to start weaving its way around the outside. So based on the vigor of this, we're going to find an even bigger pot and then we'll be okay for two years with 100% certainty and not have to wander and maybe have to intervene again next year. And we're not doing that. I'll be right back. I need a bigger pot. Woohoo! All righty, come here, you big girl. <laughs> Let's see. Let's see how much we can layer on the bottom before making sure that she has the right height. This is now a 20 centimeter pot. Ariel, if you ever see it, look at her. She's growing up. Hey, I'm so happy. Ah, <laughs> oh, you have really, really provided me with a lot of joy with this orchid over the years. So, right, graduation day into 20 centimeters. We're going to work with the potential of this orchid long term. And there you can see new roots will grow around the outside here. That's where the space will be. And then when we come to clean her up, maybe in 2025, something like that, 
we will know how the internal root bowl has fared. First of all, let's put some water in here. This is just plain RO water now. Ooh, I may need more small lecker because that's what's going into this pot now. Let's see if I did the right calculation. Now you can see that before I used mixed lecker, but because of her vigor, because of the larger pot, one microfiber, she is getting small lecca now so that the distribution and the access to water is evenly throughout. Meanwhile, the mixed lecca would have done a great job, but I'm not gonna mix up lecca sizes just because this worked out well. With the bigger pot, the smaller lecca will work just fine. How are we on height? Did that work out well? Because there will be no need to jiggle or anything, I don't think. If in doubt, take some out. Woohoo, that rhymes. Way, I got an orchid that is vigorous and a mind that is functioning. It's a good day today. <laughs> Here we go. I think that would be better just to be on the safe side. So it may not look like there was much of a difference, but one lecker bee difference will make a difference in the long run. And now we come to the fun part. Oh, <laughs> this is amazing. So if you're new to my channel, thank you so much. I hope that you are enjoying this video and you're wondering why am I filling everything up with water on water on water? Well, you know, like I'm self-watering, it makes it quite easy. But in this case, when it comes to repotting and the damage done to the velamen, etc., on top of that, we're now going to be bashing more on any bruises we may have created by just pouring leka on to exposed velamen. The water gives me a buffer. It helps the leka to also distribute in and around the gaps that I've got going. And it's much, much gentler. It also just falls into place in those gaps of its own accord without me having to be too radical and insistent as in shaking and maneuvering the orchid to get that lecker where I want it to go. This way the water is doing two things. It's protecting any bruised velamen from the hammering and it is also helping disperse the lecker evenly based on the size of the lecker doing it naturally. So we may need to just shift her a little bit in the back. Let's turn her around. Still got that gap to fill. And we still need some more. How about we put the tag in now? even though we won't be stabbing away blindly. But we might as well get the tag in. All right, another thing. Hey, hey, yeah, she's in the middle because I am now trying to make sure that my orchids go to the middle of the pot as best as possible so that when it comes to repotting, I don't have any extended roots that will force me to go to a pot size that I don't want for that moment. And keeping the orchid in the middle all the roots will grow to their specific length so that when it comes time next time to repot, I won't have any long roots determining my pot size. If they are stiff and you can't bend them, you have to crack them or cut them in order to fit them into a smaller pot. I am not anticipating having to do that with this orchid in two or three years. However, I want the opportunity to be flexible about what pot size I will need in the future and not limit myself to the fact that I've got some gorgeous roots that are far too long, I would need to cut them off to then reduce the pot size should that be the choice I want to take, including if I were to divide this orchid at any point in time in the future, then the length of the roots will pretty much limit me with what I can do pot size wise reducing the pot. That's why she goes in the middle. And besides, it looks so much better and more even this way to have a plant in the middle of a pot or thereabouts. So there was a big piece of leka here that has dislodged itself now through the process of getting wet and wet and wet. But you see the mark that it is leaving right there. I'm gonna try and reestablish that status quo seeing as that root is accustomed to having that piece of leka there even though it's large. I'm just going to give it some support by some of the leka in the back. Silly little details, I know it may seem irrelevant seeing as these are seedling bulbs and older roots, but oh my goodness, if an orchid performs along these lines, I want to be able to at least help it out long term. There we go. 
if that ever were to move out of place, it's not a big deal. It's just that if you saw me fiddling in the back there and were wondering what is she up to back there, that is what I was doing. Now, if you're wondering about the back of the orchid, let me explain. The itty bitty little seedling bulbs in the back, they are accustomed to that environment. The roots are growing up and over. If they were to fail within the next two or three years, then I can easily just chop them off it's going to be okay. The fact that they're buried so deep is also not a problem in my climate because I have a very, very dry climate, very low humidity, and for that reason, a dry top layer is almost always guaranteed unless I go around and miss just to reduce the dryness a little bit. But those little leaves down there, they know a dry top layer. It's going to be fine. Now, all that's left for us to do is drain the pot flush through. Should anything settle even further? Great. If not, we are good to go. <laughs> oh, this was fun. This was exciting. I'm going to catch some of that runoff in there. Ariel, Lodigesia crossed with Skinnery. There you go. Beautiful. Brand new spanking pot as well. Never been used. Just the way it has to be. And I prefer for it to be for an orchid that is just super, super special from a very, very special lady. Once again, Ariel, know that we miss you. I have to say I'm not so pleased I only got one orchid done today, but I prefer to be fresh and not feel like I'm gonna start rushing things, cutting corners, no lecker on root tips. There we go, just a small little detail. <laughs> but yeah, I'm not gonna be cutting corners just because I might be getting tired and not pay proper attention. So thank you so much for your time. Thank you for taking the time. The next thing about this orchid is it's time for blooms. So fingers crossed that we got the job done properly and then we can see some gorgeous blooms and dedicate them to the orchid room, AKA Ariel. Have yourselves a beautiful day. On one condition, please, that you stay safe. Take care, bye. Oh, and after all that, I'm gonna need me some ice cubes now. <laughs> Oh dear, <laughs> orchids come first, always. Hey.